Hey makers, this is Make, Build, Modify. I'm Justin, and today we're going to talk about speed squares. Because it's so fast. <laughs> Alright, so here's a trick for using a, a plumb bob and a speed square for finding a level line instead of a plumb line. So first you take your plumb bob. I've got a screw up here and you hang it to get a plumb line. And you take your speed square and you use your pivot point and we're going to mark level. Try not to disturb your line. Pivot point and you go right through 45 degrees and you draw your lines. And those are level lines. And we'll check it. And let's see. Yep. Between the lines. Level with plumb and a speed square. Okay, so this is a really good trick when you all you have is a, a plumb bob and a speed square and you need to find the pitch of a roof. So this piece of wood represents a, the outside rafter of a home and I put a screw in the side of the rafter and I'm just hanging the plumb bob there to give myself a plumb line and then you just take your uh, speed square and you slide it up, you take the 7 inch ruled side of the square put it on the underside of the rafter and you slide down to meet the pivot point. So your line crosses through that. And you can see that through the pivot and down through the common line delineations, it's on seven. That means this roof is a seven inch pitch or a seven on 12 roof pitch. There are a couple common speed squares that you can find at any hardware store. The real obvious difference between these two right here is this has a conversion chart and that information can be found elsewhere in the square and I can show you that later. Um, this one has an open area so that the scribe marks are available and I prefer to have that and rather than having redundant information on a square. So the rest of the talk will be about the Swanson speed square in particular and its attributes. And first off it's a square so you can use it to check uh, you know, the square of the end of a piece of lumber, this could be a stud or something, um, and then of course marking square lines. So there's your square line. It also has a 45 degree leg, so you can draw 45 very quickly. It also has the scribe lines I talked about earlier, so there's quarter inch lines it can scribe. So that's real handy for layout. It also has a ruler in a couple locations. It has all the way up to seven inches out here and I think three and a half. One, two, three and a half on this section here. So that's really handy if you want to draw a line, say, maybe two inches from this line. You just slide it out to the two inch mark. Draw a line and those two are two inches apart. Now what if I want a two inch square? Just mark two inches there. Find the scribe line. Now I've got a two inch square. The other thing is a protractor and it has from zero to 90 degrees and anywhere in between one degree increments. Um, we can take a look at our 45 degree mark that we drew earlier and line it up to the square leg and you'll see that 45 comes right through this line. So that's how you use the protractor. If you want to mark, let's say, a 10 degree cut line, you would swing 10 degrees to the edge from the pivot of the square and you'll get a 10 degree mark. The pivot's marked on pretty much all squares at this point and it usually is labeled pivot. I think the other one says it too. Yep, pivot. Most of them have that. And that's the point where you're going to be rolling either way. This is I'm spinning the other direction. Here's 10 degrees the opposite direction. Same point, same reference, same side. Okay, 
Don't be discouraged by the rafter. I'm not going to talk about roof framing too much. I just want to show you the other attributes of a speed square. In particular, the common scale and the hip valley scale. Those specifically have to do with rafters. And in this case, this is a roof rafter, uh, the edge view of the double plates of a wall and a stud. And <clears throat> this is a 612 pitch. And in this case, the pivot point is sitting along the top edge of the rafter and the the, the incline of the rafter goes through the six inch, six inch mark. That is a 612 pitch and it allows the 90 degree leg of the square to draw the plumb cut of the tail and the ridge and the side of the bird's mouth or what they call the seat cut in a rafter. If you were framing a roof that had hip rafters or valley rafters you would use this scale. So in this case, I would go all the way down to the six inch mark to cut a six inch pitch valley rafter or hip rafter. And the math for those is a little different. I'm not gonna go into it, but this, this, uh, inc this set of increments allows you to achieve that pitch for your needs. Also, the diamond here has to do with a method for drawing a seat cut along with this little mark by the five and kind of goes through the 80 inch mark or the 80 degree mark. Those marks have to do with marking out a seat cut and I'm gonna show you those later. Okay, remember that chart I was talking about on the other square? This is how to get that information without needing this. Okay, so let's just say that you have to build a seven inch pitch roof and you wanna cut everything on your chop saw but your chop saw doesn't have the common set of increments on it, it just has degrees. So now you need to convert your pitch, your common pitch to degrees so you can use that. In this case, you're going to take the pivot of your square on a straight edge and you're gonna rotate until the seven goes through and you're gonna look at the degree increment on the outside of the protractor. And in this case, it looks like about a little more than 30, maybe I'll say 30 and a quarter. And you can see in this chart, seven is 30 and a quarter. So let's try maybe 10, 12. So same thing, start on a straight edge, rotate until 10 goes through that edge, and it looks like 40 is what 10 is. So you would set yourself at 40 degrees. Let's look at the chart. Yep, 40 degrees. So this can be uh, rendered with just the information on this, and there's no need for that chart. This is going to be a way to find uh, two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Put another way, it's called a complementary angle. You would need this if you're gonna do um, an uncommon miter rather than just two 45s to make a 90 or if you were doing some roof framing and you needed to know those those angles in this case this is the easy way of getting um, the second angle without having to do any math in your head or with a calculator you can just use the protractor to find the angle so I'm going to draw a 90 degree mark just for reference and to start my pivot point and let's just pick a number like I don't know 31 so let's say I have 31 degrees. I'm gonna roll my, at my pivot point on my straight edge, I'm gonna roll out to 31 degrees on the protractor, and then I'm going to draw a line on the 90 degree leg of the square. And I'm gonna spin it back, make sure I'm back on my square line. And I have a mark right through 59. So 59 and 31 make 90, and necessarily so, because they're both inside of this 90 degree system. Let's say that I have to draw an angle greater than 90 degrees, say for example 115 degrees. Well, I'm going to draw a reference line for the sake of discussion here. I know that 115 is 25 degrees larger than 90. So in order to add 25 to 90, got your 90 here, you just pivot your square to 25 degrees, strike a line, and now you've got what is equivalent to 115 degrees from here to here. And also it gives you a chance to find out what the difference between the straight edge and the 115 is to get your supplementary angle. And that's 65 degrees. So now I talked about the diamond and this other little line on the square. These are used to achieve the seat cut in a rafter. And it helps you decide or determine how tall to cut this to get a width of a seat cut to match your framing lumber. In this case, these are both for three and a half inch lumber. So to show you that, I'm gonna get another rafter 
and, and uh, we'll go through the process. This is a 612 roof, so we'll do the same thing on the other rafter. Let's say we want a seat cut in here somewhere. So I'll just draw another plumb line. And what I'm doing is I'm running my pivot through the six inch mark and I'm drawing a plumb line. That's just reference. Now what I want is kind of a seat cut here and take out this material. Now, the easiest way to do this with the diamond is just slide it over until the top and bottom of the diamond have the line going through them and you draw your line. And I'm not too keen on this particular way of doing it. It renders an okay result. The other method is to use the little tiny lines here through by the 5 and through the 80 degree mark and you kind of line those up with your plumb mark and there's a little bit more distance to, to align your square. And you do that upside down with your protractor marks along where the level cut of the seat cut's going to be. And what you do is you line this up parallel with that line until the 45 degree mark runs into the rake of the roof. No idea though, you just draw a line. Almost exactly the same. Now I prefer another method. It's a little more accurate. And what I do is I'll take a straight edge and I'll draw my pitch, I'll swing my square to the pitch mark. In this case we're using six. I'll draw a line and I'll get the complementary angle. In this case about 61, 2, 3 and a half, 63 and a half. And I'll come back to the rafter and I'll put it back in the same orientation as with the diamond. And I'll run the diamond through the line, but I'll check the 63 and a half to make sure that I'm certainly going through the complementary angle. And in this case, we did that. All three rendered a pretty good result. Uh, I just like using the complementary angle because I know I'm certain that I didn't get off by using these really small references.